beautiful. All right, so it'll look like it'll go in and out of focus. You're welcome to watch. I'm going to start with the H. It'll look like it'll go a little bit in and out of focus, but that's because the vellum will pick up and put down. So we always have that problem when we're filming my other videos. So what I'm doing, I'm going to go slow, going back and forth. I'm not doing this. Once they start out messy, it's really hard to fix it after that. It's actually more work to make that look smooth than it is to just take your time, slow down, go really smooth. I'll go slower so the camera doesn't blur. And I'll work in this direction for a while, and then I'll work in this direction for a little while. So I'm sort of make, making, this is a, a large exaggeration, but I'm making an X like that. And I'm just slowly building up the value and I'm almost thinking of it like an airbrush like I'm just putting down a mist of graphite I'm not thinking about individual strokes and I'm just hovering to build up the values so the first time through this exercise or the first couple times through this exercise I'm just working in H or 2H and so it's kind of interesting you can find how much value you can build up just working in H or 2H and I might have actually made that a little bit dark, but that's okay. And then when I really, really want to get it dark, over here, this is the black part. Is it jiggling around too much? Over no, here is the black part. And so I'm really not pressing hard. The vellum is actually a little more forgiving. This transparent vellum is a little more forgiving, um, but the paper will get badly damaged if you press too hard. And so you guys can come really close and look over my shoulder so you can see close up what I'm doing. Because essentially what I try and do is I try and make it look smooth at a macro level. I try and make it look smooth if I, my viewing distance is only a few inches. And then when someone stands back and views it from a normal distance of a couple of feet, it looks almost perfect. This would take me about three hours to do this one bar. So if you finish it in 20 minutes, you're not doing it right, all right? It would take me a really long time. And so it should take you even longer maybe. Somewhere around two or three hours is probably realistic. So especially for my online people, if you spend 45 minutes and then you submit it to me, you're just gonna do it again. So may as well do it as slowly and perfectly as you can the first time. And sometimes I'll just have corrections just that you can fix right on your exercise. Other times I just want you to get more practice, so I'll have you do a whole nother one, which is totally fine. And you can see I'm keeping a soft leading edge. This is what I call the leading edge, because this is the direction I'm shading. I'm keeping it blurry and soft, because if I have a shaded area, that has hard edges and then I do another shading area next to it what happens is I get this seam right there and that seam will be really really hard for me to cover up can you see that you get sort of this rivulet in there and so here I want to work really really smooth and with a soft leading edge now my pencil's actually getting burnished, and that means even though the tip, even though it looks like a nice sharp pencil, the tip has gotten worn down a little bit. And once the tip gets worn down, it's kind of gliding over the surface of the paper. You can't feel any texture. Sometimes you can hear the difference in the sound. It won't make such a scritchy sound. It'll just be gliding over the surface. And then you're doing a lot of work, but you're not putting a lot of graphite down. So at that point, I'm gonna take my sharpener and just do a little bit of sharpening on the tip. And I do that about every two to four minutes, very often. So sometimes here in the studio, people have their sharpening kit several feet away from them. And I know they're not sharpening enough if their sharpening kit is out of reach. It should be really, really close right underneath where you're working so you can get, a, get to it very easily. Now. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it in the video? You're starting to get a feeling for directional strokes. I've been working this direction for a while. So as soon as I notice the directional strokes, 
if I've forgotten to change because I'm chatting right now, I'm going to go and I'm going to go the other direction or a slightly different direction to get rid of those directional strokes. And what you want to do, like I said a few minutes ago, you want to do a pretty narrow X. Those are my two directions that are comfortable for me. What you don't want to do is do everything this way and then come back across and do everything perpendicular. And that's when you get what I call a lattice work pattern. You get something that looks like this. And that's actually harder to fill in and make smooth than if you have a bunch of lines like this and you cross them at a slight angle. See how that fills in those little gaps more? That's more opaque and this is more lattice work. Mm -hmm. So you're actually on a, on a macro level, on a tiny level, that's what I'm doing, very, very short strokes. You're filling in those little interior gaps better than if you went like this and then crossed the opposite direction. So it's because you can see, you know, right here that there's strokes going this way and there's strokes going this way. It doesn't actually eliminate your strokes. Do you guys have any questions? Anything that's occurring to you while you're watching? Does it look different than what you've done before? Mm -hmm. Say that louder. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it should feel a little bit. <laughs> question, um, yeah. As it translates into paintings. So yeah. When you're trying to smooth out paint. Yeah. Um, do you do the same sort of technique? I don't crisscross in paint. With paint, it's more about pressure control. So with paint, I'll make all my strokes the same direction. Okay. But I'm going over them in such a way that the edges overlap each other a little bit and blend a little bit just so that um, they're merging together more. Okay. But yeah, I don't go one direction and then another direction. So and so, are you making almost little loops instead of little... I think I'm doing like that, zigzags. Zigzags. Yeah, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing little okay. circles. I don't think. Once you get down here, it's hard to tell. And then sometimes I'll see like a little black spot develop. Have you guys ever come across the black mm -hmm. dots? Mm -hmm. So the black dots are like the bane of our existence. What happens, especially happens on less on the vellum sometimes but more on other things so what I'll do is I'll take a kneaded eraser I'll spin it into a point and I'll tap out that black dot mm -hmm. um, and this is you want to hear the pro tip pro tip <laughs> you can tap it first in a little bit of graphite you've built off, off off on the edge and that builds up some graphite on the tip so when you go to tap inside to pull out a black dot it doesn't go down to the white of the paper mm -hmm if you load up your, your eraser with a little bit of graphite first. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's... Um, now I switched over to the 2H. It's a little early, but I'm never going to be able to fill this up while we're filming. But I just want to show, I want you guys to be able to see, that you can't, with the 2H, with a nice hard pencil, you can't tell where the strokes of graphite end and where the paper begins. It should be so light that you're almost not even making a mark. Can you guys see that? Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes, especially on the sphere, got our sphere, and I don't freehand a sphere well at all, which is why we don't freehand them. Got our sphere, we've got our poles of our terminator, we've got the ellipse here, Sometimes, and we've got the highlight right up there. Sometimes what happens is people have filled up all the dark light. They've shaded this whole area of the sphere and they've gotten too dark, too close to the highlight. And then it gets almost what I call ring around the collar. You can see where the graphite ends. You see that? Mm -hmm. So that means that you have, um, a gray ball with a white flashlight shining on it. And that's not the same thing as a white ball and a white light. So a white ball and a white light, the graphite will end softer and almost invisibly. 
So from the terminator up to the light, you can't tell where the graphite ends and the highlight begins. Just fade that off completely. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, I think we're good. Nice scribbly little mess.